Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host. I'm a business and life coach working to bring clarity and balance for the business owner. I started this podcast because I wanted to hear some candid conversations about how women from all walks of life really work their businesses, and because I love hearing stories. So each week, I'll feature a woman who has a story to tell about her business and about her everyday life. Many will tell of their successes and maybe even their failures. No matter who we are, our stories can truly make a difference in someone else's life. So here on Rising Stories, you will hear advice on topics like marketing, business startup, being productive, and on personal development. And let's face it, when two women get together for a conversation, you will hear so much more. I always ask my guests about their favorite things and maybe a restaurant recommendation or two. We might also throw in a recipe, who knows? So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes. Sometimes someone catches my eye on Instagram and I know that I need to have them on Rising Stories. This is exactly what happened when I saw Michelle Brown of Sweet Threads Co. on Instagram. My conversation with her was beyond fun and it was jam-packed with some great information. I know you're going to really enjoy this episode. She takes us on her journey from making applique shirts on Etsy to now building her home one step at a time. We talk about all of the things on this show, everything from being shadow banned on Instagram to Benjamin Moore Paint to the new app called Like to Know. I can't wait for you to hear this conversation. But before we begin, I want to tell you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash rising stories. There are over 180 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. This would make a great gift for anyone on your Christmas list. And if you missed that link, I have added it to the show notes along with all the information mentioned on the show. All the links will also be on kareensandifer.com. Here is my conversation with Michelle Brown. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Corinne. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me today. I'm super excited because I want to talk to you about all of the things that you've done. So you've you've had a, a little a, a Etsy shop, and I don't want to say little because you, you sold some things on Etsy, and they were like handmade children's clothing. And I then did. You also are a blogger and... And your biggest claim to fame right now is that you are building your own home, like a dream home, and yes. you guys are doing it all on your own. We are. Basically, we had them put the foundation and set up the drywall and the bones, and we have done everything in this interior ourselves, laying hardwood floors tile, bathroom tile, backsplash in the kitchen, all of our custom built-ins and molding. It has all been the both of us. And I say wow. us as in me, my husband, I call him my handy husband. Um, and he puts up with me on a daily basis with all this stuff. So it's been two years now of just getting this house finished project after project. And so you've been documenting all of this on Instagram. Which is my favorite. I app. have. I love Instagram. I do love Instagram. It's I like, love Instagram. I can really go down a bad like rabbit hole Instagram. That and YouTube. <laughs> Those you are can my lose two. yourself for hours scrolling yeah. on Instagram. All the pretty pictures. And so you did you start um, Instagramming like early on with your? I did. Um, I you know. In the beginning, when Instagram first started, it was just a personal account. And then I started, um, you know, documenting our home build from the day we purchased the land um, to pouring the foundation and getting this house built. And, you know, 
handles every square inch by square inch. And, you know, people started liking our pictures, my pictures. They started asking me questions about products that I used in our house or how I did this and how we did that. And it just has grown and grown. And now I share, you know, our home on a daily basis um, the, when it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I just really truly enjoy sharing and inspire sharing with others and inspiring them. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why I keep up with Instagram. And you have grown like, so when you first started, did you have a lot of followers and most of my followers were friends and family. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I learned the ins and outs. I'm still learning the ins and outs. Um, I don't know if most people know Instagram is changing so much on a daily basis. Um, for us that aren't huge businesses and huge corporations, it's tough because they're making you or forcing you to almost pay for your posts and for be seen and to be visible. Um, so it's tough. It's tough being a smaller account on Instagram, but you know, I've learned little tricks here and there and, you know, have just really grown throughout this whole year. And now I'm almost to 12,000 followers. Wow. So tell me, what are, what's one trick that you've learned on how to, I guess, I don't know, are you beating the system of Instagram or are you just figuring out ways to gain momentum and get more followers? I don't think I'm beating the system because there are some <laughs> days I feel like it's beating me down. Um, you know, Instagram's changing what they call its algorithm. So, um, and you can, people, anyone can Google this, but they're changing what is seen and who's seen on Instagram. So when you post a picture, the more people that like it and the more people that comment it in the fastest amount of time is going to be shown first on your, on your feed. Um, it used to be chronological order, and then they changed it by the most popular post, which I think is frustrating because I prefer it to be chronological order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, uh, my trick is I have learned just through trial and error the best time to post my pictures, and usually that's about 8 o'clock at night. Um, if I post it midday, it's like crickets. Mm. If I post it at night, um, it's gaining speed and it's, it's gained some momentum and it goes on. And it, I don't know if anybody noticed when they post a picture, since it's not chronological order anymore, you may find posts in your feed from three days ago. Um, yeah, I have seen so that. that's all because of algorithm mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just it's playing the game. It's playing an Instagram game. And I am in a couple of chat groups and message threads with some other um, Instagram pages that are similar in mine. And we share tips and tricks of the trade. And I think that is another thing if you are new on Instagram to, you know, reach out to maybe an account that's the same size as yours, or the same look and feel as yours, and just share ideas and thoughts. Um, there's articles posted all the time about social media and we share those and just little ways to grow more organically than, you know, some people do pay for followers. I have not done that, but yeah, um, there I, are accounts that do. Yes. And, and that's, what's crazy is that you, you have grown it organically where you haven't paid and, and so have I, I don't have as many as you do, but, um, but that there are some that have paid for their followers and it's almost like that's not fair because it's I not. can't, you're not comparing. I mean, Instagram should know you're not comparing for, you know, apples to apples, but I guess a follower right. is a follower. And, um, I never thought about, I feel like they're catching on though. I do feel like they're oh, catching good. on. They're catching on to the robot apps. If you want to call them and, you know, I, they, I have heard, I'm not going to say no, I have heard they did a clean sweep of all those, you know, quote unquote, fake accounts and mm -hmm. that just like for a like. And, um, but I think the best way is to grow organically, know who your followers are and know what pictures they like. Mm -hmm. I know mine like pictures of my house and full room views. They do not like me taking like, they call them vignettes 
like a little shelf, you know, like a little styled shelf. My, my followers don't like that. They don't like close ups and they like the whole room picture. And mm-hmm. I just kind of have learned tricks and trades like that. And then, um, you know, have grown that way by knowing what time to post, knowing what your followers like. And then the hashtag game is another whole avenue on Instagram. Um, you know, making sure your photos and, you know, tagging them properly. Um, yeah. So what has ha- helped. I, I once heard that you should only tag, like you should only do ha- so many hashtags, like 13 yeah, hashtags. I think it's, I've heard 20. I usually do no more than 15. And um, changing them up is my biggest piece of advice because if you continually use the same hashtag, picture after picture after picture, mm-hmm. that is how you get, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't. This rumor is how you get what's called shadow ban. <gasps> what is um, that? Shadow ban. So... It's rumored that Instagram will almost shadow ban your photo or page so only people that are following you can see it. Mm-hmm. If someone is not following you, you know, you know, I get a lot of followers from people, you know, searching the hashtag feeds. For instance, last night I put in, you know, farmhouse decor, say, mm-hmm. and people will type in farmhouse decor and go through the pictures and maybe they'll see my picture pop up. And they'll go to my page and they might like it and then they'll like me. Now, if you're shadow banned on Instagram, they will not, a new follower, someone that is not following you will not be able to see your picture. So Uh, it becomes frustrating. Yeah. Um, The way to get around that is by changing up your hashtags, um, not commenting and liking on pictures so much because they think that you are in essence, a robot account. Mm. Um, And I have been shadow banned myself and it, it sucks. Let me, how do you know that you're being shadow banned? I could tell personally that I was not getting the interaction that my other photos had got. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I only got 20 likes in, you know, 10 hours or whatever. Um, I wasn't getting new likes from people that weren't following me because I do watch my activity um and I just there's a shadow ban tester suppose that you can google I don't know the exact address but if you type in instagram shadow ban tester they can test your profile and your picture I don't know how accurate it is but I have been banned it took me about three weeks to get off of it and it is not fun when you are trying to yeah how do you get off of it um so, uh, there's a lot of different ways people have suggested, you know, completely logging off of Instagram and staying kind of silent for a week mm-hmm. or a few days. Um, and then people have done the opposite where they just post like they regularly do, um, you know, keep on liking and commenting like they would normally do and it gets lifted. Or you can contact Instagram as much as you mm-hmm. want in the feedbacks. Um, which is what I did, and I probably knew them so much that they <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, okay. Well, that is um, but that's I like have, being in jail. Yeah. That's like it is. It's called Instagram jail. <laughs> Instagram jail. Uh, and I have been in it, and it is not fun. And I have known many Instagram friends that have been in it and are still in it. And you question why, and you get frustrated. And the biggest thing that I've taken away from Instagram is, you no, know, I'm just going to keep on posting. Mm-hmm. I'm getting followers. I'm getting likes on my pictures. Opportunities are coming up that never would have came my way if I wasn't on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And if in the end I'm just inspiring one person to go and ship out their fireplace, well, then it's it's all worth it in the end to me. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I wish I knew how to ship out my place <laughs> that's a great idea well, i have i there's a blog a post on my blog a okay. DIY and it's not that hard. you'll have to give it to <laughs> me and i'll put it on the show notes because i i, I will. Definitely... it's actually my most popular post on my blog awesome. um is our flat fireplace yep and it's so the people, first project that we did people will come to your blog for things like that so you've got like how to's and so you're documenting not just by pictures on Instagram, but you're doing everything. You're putting it on your blog. Yes, it's on my blog. I have a Facebook 
um, social media, like Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, Pinterest, which I use a lot for myself to get inspiring pictures. And then I also post um, and pin my Instagram posts and my blog posts just to kind of get out there and inspire others. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love Pinterest. I know. I wish Pinterest was around when I got married. (laughs) Yes. Yes. For, yeah. My daughter got married and we we did that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, what's crazy is even the simple things, and you probably know this because you're building your house and even the simple things that make things look simple, like, oh, that's really cool and simple. Take a lot of effort. They do. And they work. absolutely do. To look simple. <laughs> to, look, yeah. to look nice and simple. So what um what's what's next on your agenda? Like what will you do once your house is finished? Are you gonna dive into I joke project? that we're gonna move? No. <laughs> <laughs> um honestly, it will probably be with all the projects we have left to do, maybe another two or three years. We have a basement to finish. We have um, a mudroom to finish. We have an unfinished attic space that I want to make into my kids' little hangout room. And everything takes time. My husband works full time. We have three little kids running around who do lend a hand when they want to and when they can. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's busy. My projects take weeks to finish sometimes months, you know, we start things and then stop and then start something up. So, um, when all is said and done, you know, hopefully I, you know, offer advice to family and friends often. And, you know, once I have all three kids full time in school, I'm hoping to take it to the next level and maybe, you know, take some classes, do e-design. Uh, I would love to do that. So we shall see what the future holds, but yeah. long plan, I would love to be an interior stylist. Yes. That would be cool. You know, what I like is um, I like when people can come and do things, you know, use things that you already have. That's like my favorite thing. I love watching yes. that where you're like, oh, you know, like, like I have this purple velvet love seat in my office. And it's like, I bet somebody could come in here and go, that would look great here. You know, like so someone somewhere totally different in my house. I love those kinds of things. Right. Where, where they take everything that you have and and make it something, you know, you just go, oh, I didn't know that. Right. And a lot there. of the pieces in our house, you know, um, when we moved, we sold or gave away a lot of stuff. And I, I honestly started from scratch, which is why I have hardly anything. My kids joke that we don't have anything. But um, I'm all about, you know, less is more. And, you know, a lot of our pieces in our house are – hand-me-downs like all the furniture in my oldest daughter's room was mine when I was a kid and we just refaced it Mm -hmm. painted it we made it new again my grandmother's desk um a dresser we found off a craigslist things of my mom's and grandparents and then my husband built a lot of the furniture in our house too my kitchen table dining table and coffee table so I love mixing old new and you know making a new piece give it a, you know, breath of fresh air and life. And, um, you know, instead of buying all brand new stuff all the time and, you know, curbsides, the, you know, chairs on the side of the road are one of my favorite things to do. So. Me too. I, I'm constantly like, er, you know, I just put the right. brakes on, <laughs> back it up. Then and- it sits in my basement, not finished. And what are we going to do with this now? But, um, yeah. Yes, making old pieces new again um, is something I'm definitely all about. And Mm -hmm. I love that a lot of pieces in our house came from my grandmother or, um, you know, my parents. And we've just, with a fresh coat, a fresh coat of paint can just do a world of a difference to a piece of furniture. Have you ever tried the paint that is like from, I think, Sherwin Williams and Benjamin Moore both have it, but it's like a leveling I have not. I have been using, um, I used to use the chalk paint and I am have stopped using that and used Benjamin Moore's advance line on all of our furniture that I have had to repaint. It's nice because it's self-leveling and um, doesn't show brush marks or roller mm. marks and it just gives like a nice clean 
uh, smooth finish. Yeah. Um, but I haven't heard of that one yet, so I will have yeah, to. Yeah, I bet it's the same thing. If it's self leveling, I bet that's their mm-hmm. their line. Um, and I know that Sherwin Williams has one too. I'm secretly thinking one of these days I'm just gonna like paint my cabin my kitchen cabinets everybody's like it takes forever and it's terrible don't it do does it. take forever and i'm like i know it I does know. but it's like it's a process but it's I, I everybody that i know has who have painted their kitchen cabinets have said it's worth it in the end yeah so you just kind mm-hmm. of get in the mindset that you're going to do it and you know be yeah. patient and it'll 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 get done mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and be beautiful yes So what, besides Instagram, what is your favorite app on your phone? Oh, I have started loving the like to know it app, which I don't know is, it's nothing new, but, um, it's just another place for inspiring pictures. It's called like to know it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's through reward style and I follow a lot of home decor people on it. And it's so nice because they'll post a picture and all of the products in that space are all linked so you can easily shop right is, from there. Is that the one where you swipe up? Well, they'll say people in the store, Instagram stories say swipe up. Or- well, it's, it is connected with the reward style. Um, but the like to know it apps just squares of people's, you know, pictures. Okay. And you can, they have fashion, they have beauty, they have lifestyle and home decor. Mostly I follow hmm. home decor. And, you know, if somebody has a pretty vase on there, you know, they usually post where they got it from. And you gotcha. can literally shop right from there. It's really nice. And if it you shop, famous. so if you post something and you shop from there, do you get a kickback for that? If someone, you do, if I and I actually and just started reward style myself, and I, I mm-hmm. was, it's a, um, you have, it's a application, so mm-hmm. you have to be approved, and you have to have so um, many, and I, thousands of, followers. I believe, yeah, you have to have it a certain amount. I'm not quite sure what it is, um, and I literally sat on this in September because it just confused me. I just didn't have a second to like actually sit down and figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it's a small percentage. I mean, 50 cents maybe. Mm-hmm. It's nothing crazy. But I know a lot of fashion bloggers and now a lot of the home decor bloggers have started doing that. And mm-hmm. it's just a way to earn some extra cash. Yeah. It's not a lot. so. Um, but yes, I love actually the like to know it app because I find new products and new stuff and you can buy it right from your phone, which is really nice. That's awesome. I'm going to check that out. Um, yes. I know, and I know that you have a Nash- Nashville connection. You spend you. your summers here in Nashville, but you're originally, or you are, res- you reside in Philly, Philadelphia. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, I actually went to university of Tennessee in Knoxville. My parents and my sister live in Franklin and um, my husband works up here, obviously. So we spend our summers, July and August, in Nashville. Oh, and neat. my kids count down the days every time. Um, they, do. We back down. they do. They do. They love it. It's always a fun summer, catching up with family and friends. Yeah. And, um, what you know, a great we do all idea. the Nashville Yes, it gets us out. It just kind yeah. of, you know, sometimes you just need a break from life and mm-hmm. where you are. And this is, that's our break is just going down to Tennessee for the summer. Um, and we soak up every single minute of it. And we literally leave when school gets out, which is about mid-June. And we get back right before Labor Day. Nice. Um, so, and yeah. a nice, nice, long summer. I have a girlfriend that lives in Florida and she does that. She drives up, her husband travels for a living and and he, she comes up to Tennessee and I think that's so cool. And I think the kid, what a great, great memories too, that you're making. Oh, we do. We take little day trips all the time and, um, we just have so much fun and Nashville's changing. Every time I go, there's a new restaurant and a new oh, shop. And so yeah. we, we do all of it. We do all the things and, um, it's always a memorable summer and yes. my kids, Love it. Speaking of, what is your favorite Nashville restaurant? My favorite. There's changing so much. So I many. love our taco at twelve on, in Twelve South. Bar taco. Yes. Um, we always try to go down there. 
Um, what's the other one we just tried this summer? I can't think of the name. I love Audrey's. Is it Audrey's or Adele's? Adele's. Love Adele's. I haven't been there in like a few, since two years. Um, what's it? Oh, Little Octopus. That was the other one we tried this summer and I loved um, in the, I think that was in the Gulch. Is that in the Gulch? Yeah. It's hard I haven't tried that. Up. It is. There's it is. so many. And you know, what I absolutely love <laughs> now about Nashville is that when, so my husband and I used to love to, to brunch. We would go, I mean, and our family, we like Saturday mornings, we're like, let's, it was a family thing to do. We, we would be like, let's, you know, we kind of got in a habit of just doing brunch on Saturday mornings together. That was like our family time before everybody, you know, soccer or, you know, doing stuff with friends as they got older. That was a great time because no one was doing anything on Saturday, mid Saturday morning. Um, and it was hard pressed to find anything, any restaurants that had breakfast or brunch. And now everyone does, which I love. Because it's my favorite. We, I mean, I love going. I mean, I always try to, you know, we do like the touristy thing too and go to Loveless Cafe. And But I always try to, you know, get a handful of restaurants or try the new restaurants when we're in town. And we always, I mean, the Nashville restaurant scene is just, like a, it's just hard to keep up with. But yeah. it's every, I have not gone to a bad place. Always delish. Right? Yeah, it's great. I mean, and it's booming. There's... And there's something for everyone, which I love, you know, if yes. you're like yes. vegan or, or, you know, love to eat organic or you, you know, all the ethnicities are represented. I mean, it seems like all of them are. are if you I know. Want it's, something, and it's so funny it. because I feel like Nashville's becoming such a go-to place. So I have friends up here like, we're going to Nashville, we're going to Nashville. Can you, you know, they expect me just to give them like one or two restaurants and I email them like. A list of places to go yeah. but um it's such a it's just it's such a fun city I mean we truly love it, it truly is. love it there so yeah it is well tell me what your three favorite things are that you're absolutely loving these days home decor wise or just every anything anything like for me I am loving my little it's kind of like a little parfait well I've I've been staying away from dairy and I found this non-dairy it's made out of coconut milk and it tastes just like yogurt it's like a fake yogurt, oh. but it but it's made with coconut milk so that's like that's one of my favorite things this week is just the so delicious coconut milk via uh, yogurt alternative I guess is what it is kind of hard my favorite thing for breakfast these days is come from my sister is chia seed pink like the seed, so I just put chia seeds in almond milk and I top it with granola or um, fresh fruit. Mm-hmm. And I have just been loving that for breakfast. I am, you know, always either skip breakfast because I don't have time, but this is something you can make the night before or while you're getting ready and let it sit a little bit. So I love that. You let it sit in the um, milk, almond milk? I do for maybe about five minutes and it gets, oh, okay. it gets a little, um, Thick. It kind of gets a thicker consistency, so mm-hmm. it's just a little easier to eat. Yeah. I'm loving that food-wise. Um, trying to think. Home decor-wise, my favorite thing right now is my new rug that I got that can literally take outside and wash off if needed. What? Um, wow. It's by Dash and Albert. It's the kid friendliest pet friendliest rug um and it's super soft still on the feet but it's an indoor outdoor rug and my kids have gotten like chocolate on it and you know coffee has been spilled on it and it literally comes right up with like a little wipe or a wet paper towel it's wow. amazing um that's the home decor favorite thing and else Right now, clothing wise, I'm all the new bell sleeves and ruffly shirts that have Those been coming out, and the um, what's it called? The cold shoulder tops and sweaters are so cute, and it's mm-hmm. just something that it's just a new trend. I picked up some cute sweaters at Loft the other day that are going to be my staple for the holiday season. <laughs> Ooh, sweaters at Loft! I need to, I need to make a trip there. That sounds like a great thing for me to do. I I I have a lack of sweaters, so I need to get some good sweaters. Yeah, for sure. They had a lot. 
in all colors and all, you know, dress up, dress down, and everything's 40% off right now. So wow. maybe you should make a trip. I'm going to have to do that. Thank you so much, Michelle, for coming on. Thank and you so I have much for having me. enjoyed talking with you, and I'm super excited to hear and to follow you. And so your Instagram handle is? Sweet Threads Co. Sweet Threads Co. And you, they can go on there and look at all of your house and how it's come. You know, you yes. can... People, y'all can all scroll of all the way to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> we can... can see it from the very beginning. Yeah. And I share in stories often, progress shots that aren't pretty enough to go on my Instagram feed. Um, but yes, you can see all of our house pictures and all of our latest and greatest DIY projects on Instagram. That's awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much. Of course. I could stay and listen to her advice all day long. Michelle is such a gem and I really enjoyed her restaurant recommendations. Don't forget to follow her house journey and her story on Instagram. I will provide the link in the description below and I'll also have everything on the show notes at kareensanderfer.com. If you or someone you know is thinking of launching their own business, please tell them about me as a business and life coach and to listen to Rising Stories podcast. And don't forget to click on the links provided in the description. If you're wanting to purchase a book or any products, please consider supporting Rising Stories podcast by clicking on that link and purchasing books and products mentioned on this show. Thanks for listening and keep rising in your own story.